it would be like deep breath, <laughs> hands over the face, uh, and then a no, that a is smile. Impressive. And I was like, they do wow. that. And I was like, wait, what? And they were like, mom, like that, that's your face all the time. Access more. Hey friends, Candace here to share how your support can spread thoughtful conversations about faith to millions of listeners. When you donate to the Access More Podcast Network, you fund new episodes of shows like mine, shows that aren't afraid to dig into real and vulnerable topics. Plus, you help us deliver those episodes to people across the world by expanding our translation service to more languages. It just takes a couple of seconds to make a gift today at accessmore.com slash donate. Life is like a roller coaster, but it's so much better when we go through it together. Welcome to the Candace Cameron Bury podcast. We're here to share conversations about life's challenges, celebrations, and everything in between. My guest host this season is Jenny Allen, who just released her new book, Untangle Your Emotions. Come join us. Okay, week three, we are back. We're talking about emotions. Talking about getting mad. (laughs) We are. (laughs) Dang it. But I don't want to get mad just yet. Okay. I first want to go through a speed round of questions. These are always fun just to get to know each other better. I can't wait. So let's do some would you rather. Okay. (laughs) Cake or pie? Ooh, cake. What's your favorite? Uh, there's this sprinkle one around the corner. It's pretty much a vanilla one. Oh, it's good. It's so <laughs> good. good. Tacos or barbecue? Tacos, tacos, tacos. Me tacos. too. Never Me get too. tired of them. Nope. Mexican twice a week. Yes. Apples or oranges? Oh, I'm going to have to say oranges in this house, but I really would pick it. I'm not kidding. A good orange. <laughs> okay. I know. It's, it's got to be sumo. Yeah. <gasps> Ice cream or froyo? You know, have you ever had pinkberry? Do y'all have that in California? Yeah, we have it. That tart with the um it's a it's the best tart it is flavor really good. with like the chocolate on top oh, it's so i used good. to eat pink berry all the time i, I haven't had it. it in forever i love it yeah i'm an ice cream girl though are you I like jenny's like, ice cream i love do you jenny's not just eat jenny's because it's your name i do and i give it away as a gift a lot because i do love <laughs> it should. so much you should yeah it's hard the better what's your favorite one of those the butter the i love the butter, I like, brown butter one there's a there's a peanut butter one. It's oh. a Buckeye something. And then oh, there's like had a Brumbleberry crisp oh, or something. Oh, yes. So good. good. It's so good. Okay. Are you coffee or matcha or tea? Tea. I I had to give up coffee a while back. It hurt my stomach. So I've gone to- Me too. You too? Me too. So I, I don't tea drink now. Co- yeah. But I like matcha. I like, I mean- yeah, let's be real. Matcha tastes terrible, but I it, love it personally. But you, but you have to flavor it. No, no, you can, no. <gasps> you but if are you amazing. have really great matcha, it tastes great. I mean, I've in not my had opinion, that because it a... tastes like grass and feet. The ones I've had. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm missing out I, on the matcha I you're drinking that a lot. But I love, I love the matcha I ha- have, and it's okay. high quality matcha. Okay. But, uh, but same, or I do tea. I do love how matcha makes me feel. I feel like it's a little bit more than tea, but really steady. Yes, like you don't- exactly. You don't crash after it. That's also why I had to give up coffee. It just gave me these extreme highs and lows and it just hurt yeah. my body and made my body feel bad. Yep, and I'm then, with you. So I haven't had coffee in four years. Yeah. And I would, like, you couldn't even pay me to have a sip of it because that's how bad it made me that's feel. That's how I feel. Do you, do you do the little, do you make it at home with a little matcha? Frata? Yeah. Like, do you do it yourself? Oh yeah. I have a whole ritual. You do? Yeah. I oh, love it. That's I, so fun. I do. I have the little strainer and okay, the, all, of, all of the accoutrements that I'm go with it. matcha. You're going to send me a picture of all that and I'm going to get your matcha and I'm going to try it because okay. I like the routine of coffee, you know? Right. I like waking up and like I did too. I miss that. So, yeah. And that's why I love making matcha because there's a whole, a whole thing to do. Good. Okay. But learning, you can always make matcha lattes. Definitely. If, if with a little just lavender. Just straight up Americano matcha yeah. doesn't do it yeah, for you. I might need a little sugar in okay. there somewhere. Yeah. I don't like sugary drinks. I don't I'm either, just a, but the, okay. you, that one takes a little. <laughs> it's a little too grassy for you. <laughs> Tell me I'm I not wrong you. out there, y'all. <laughs> no, a lot of people are raising their hands, but I happen to love it. <laughs> 
Okay. Well, that was fun. Yeah. That was fun. But now we're going to talk, talk about, about anger, anger, which is also fun. Let's be real. And I let know. me start by saying this. Like my favorite people are like Italians. Like people, you know what it's I mean? So I think true. I'm part Italian. I don't know it. I haven't ever done a DNA test, but I promise you I, I would come in and I have some family in Italy, but not, they're not my blood relatives. Yeah. So I don't know. I just, I feel like we are those kind of people. Yes. Like we I are agree. Big. It's even the Russians too. When, yeah. th when they're all talking, my yes. husband and his family are friends. Like if you walked in, you would think they were just angry. Yelling right. At each right. Other. But they're just passionate <laughs> yes. and they're saying what they think. And I yes. just, that is like, I'm it. at home in that. Those are our dinner table discussions with our family too. We're just very passionate, loud, outspoken, opinionated people. Right. But. <laughs> but it's not angry. It's not right. angry. And I think that's where this is conversation so fun because it really is everybody. approach. I was nervous to write this book because everybody approaches this subject so differently. So you have uh -huh. people like with it, the Italian blood or just that mood, like yeah. they they're big with their feelings and they say it all and they're passionate. And then you have people that just aren't expressive. It's not that they're not emotional yeah. because we're made in the image of God and God is emotional. And so you see it throughout all of scripture from Genesis to Revelation. You see his emotions described constantly. Mm -hmm. You especially see it in the person of Jesus. I mean, to, to set the stage of us talking about this, I um, mean, you know, this is one of the most emotional moments in Jesus's life. And he comes into the temple and people are selling things and exchanging things. And again, it wasn't the fact that people were providing a service because ultimately they were providing sacrifices for people that had been traveling a long way. That mm -hmm. wasn't what was wrong. It was where they were doing it. They were doing it in a place that was supposed to be a place of prayer. And so he's very disappointed that what is supposed to be the most intimate place for, mm -hmm. for believers to commune with God has now become a place where they're distracted by noise and chaos and money. And it's just not mm -hmm. what he wanted happening in his house. And so he comes in and he like starts flipping tables, you know, and in Matthew 21, you see, and Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who had sold and bought in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold pigeons. He said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you make it a den of robbers. Mm -hmm. And so there was this sense of this is not, do not do this in my, in my house. And he's angry and he flips a table, which is so yeah. comforting to me. And I just yeah. think as we start this conversation on anger, it's just good to know that Jesus got mad. And everybody is thinking he got mad because it was righteous. And it's like, well, we usually get mad because it's righteous too. Like mm -hmm. mostly it's an injustice that is, right. that is so big or so great that we get ticked and it might yep. be an injustice against our, us. Right. Yeah. But, but still, I do think there's anger can be one we're really hard on in ourselves. And yet I think it is, it is, um, there's enough injustice in the world, small and big road mm -hmm. rage counts, right? Somebody cuts you off. Yep. Um, that it is understandable that we would feel that emotion a lot. Yeah. No, I, I agree. By the way, as you're listening to this, it's pouring rain. It is pouring rain. So we, if you hear we so much noise in the not background. not be able to leave the studio when we go out. Like it has been raining for days. It's a crazy storm here, yeah. you guys. So that it's oh it just kind of died down oh, a little yeah. bit but that's what you're hearing um yeah i always so so anger is such an interesting emotion when it comes to jesus and i am so grateful that yeah we are shown an example of him getting mad and i often think of righteous anger as we yeah. as we always do but it's anger is a is a um, is an emotion that I, I, I feel like because, because I don't want to get overly angry, I want to make sure my choices are really good Yeah. in my anger. I've always tried to suppress my anger yeah. more. And yet the older I get, the more passionate I get. Yeah. And it's a, it's a feeling now that I have m more than I used to. Sure. And so it feels a little unknown for me at times. And especially when it is deep anger. Yeah. And um, 
So I don't even know like where I'm going with well, that. But let's, let's talk about it. So everybody relates to that, first of all, because I... I just noticed in myself recently, like I was getting short with people I work with a lot mm -hmm. and I love the people I work with yeah. and I don't want to be Devil Wears Prada girl. Like I want to actually be a great <laughs> totally. boss. I want to be a got boss yep. that people want to work for. Yeah. I want to be someone that shows appreciation and gratitude and not is cutting and short yeah. because I'm disappointed. But a lot of the times I'm disappointed makes sense, right? It's not like, yep. it's not like how dare I get angry because someone drop the ball about something. It's like, no, of course I feel dis we're doing important work. We are running really fast. I really feel a lot of disappointment and frustration when, when that's not done. But where I get in trouble is when I pick up the phone in the middle of my anger mm -hmm. and I draft a text at 6 a.m. Mm. <laughs> that's where I get in trouble. So got it. I think it's like where we've got to start the conversation is really where the scripture does, which in Ephesians it says, in your anger, do not sin. So mm -hmm. we've talked about that verse before. In your anger, do not, do not sin. So it's like, okay, you're going to be angry. It presupposes you're going to feel anger. Yep. In your anger, everybody's anger. But don't sin. So what does that look like in that tension? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we've got to talk about because it is so hard. All the other emotions, I don't think they're quite as impulsive in our behavior as right. anger. Exactly. Because sadness is just internal. And not, now, and I will say this, suppressed sadness and suppressed fear usually doesn't come out as happiness. It comes out as anger, mm -hmm. almost always. So if you are someone who feels like you're really short with your kids, mm -hmm. you're really short with your you know, team, your office, if you're really short with your parents, whatever it is, probably you are someone who has somewhere, somebody's like, oh no, don't say it, Jenny. Yes, somewhere you have suppressed anger. I mean, you have suppressed fear or sadness. Mm. And that those are feelings that you need to feel. And the best example of this is my kid. And I won't say which one, but they will come home and they will be angry a lot. But what they really feel is not mad. They really feel sad. Mm. Like they got left out at school. Mm -hmm. um, even at some points, not you know, pushed away from the lunch table that they usually sit at. The really hard things mm -hmm. that are really sad. But rather than come home and feel sad, because that's embarrassing, because that's right. too vulnerable. Right. Because that, in their mind, that would be caring. And they don't want to care. They come home and they are short with all of us. Now that's, right. you can see it really well in a preteen or teenager. But. <laughs> yes, you can. But with a adult, it really isn't all that different. It's very yeah. similar. Hurt people hurt people. Right. Yeah. It's pretty consistent. <laughs> it's the first thing I, yeah, I think about when someone is angry towards me or reactionary. It's like, okay. They're probably hurting. Yeah, they're probably hurting. So, yeah, if you, I mean, I, I'm sure there's a study out here about this, but if you were to study bullies, like 90% of the time, you'd probably find that they were bullied. You know, like there's right. a sense of. Right. Right we act out of how we've been treated. There's no doubt. Yeah. When has anger gotten you in trouble? I heard a, a story when it didn't get you in trouble, but has it ever gotten you in trouble? Um, I'm trying to think. You know, I feel like I, of course, there, there have to be stories. I'm, I'm really trying to dig deep here in my brain. But I feel like I, I really, this really do isn't control, yours. It, it, I really tr control my anger pretty well. Yeah. But, okay, you're under so much stress. I can't even believe, Candice, the so beautiful here, things you the, build. Here, that like, what? The beautiful things you build and like how much you do. There has to be like. No, but here's, here's who I am in okay. anger, okay? Okay. Are you flight? Well, no. W when I get really mad, and my close friends know this, and now the whole world is going to know this, <laughs> but like, I, I very rarely i i don't curse i don't use it's just not a part of my yeah. everyday language i and i when i'm really mad like i will either get in my car or i'm in my room but nobody hears me and i will curse out no. <laughs> like whatever i'm so angry about and throw all by yourself th all by myself and like wow. throw the words that i feel so awful yeah that 
just came out of my mouth, but I'm like, ah, and yep. I got to just get it out. But nobody hears it except for God and me. And I'm like, OK, yeah. And I compose myself and then I'm there. I, you know, go back to whatever I have to do. But I'm like, I'm like a closet angry person. But it's Actually, just not an emotion that I deal with. No, that, that is awesome. But it's awesome. You give yourself permission to just lose your mind every once in a while, because I think, you know, you, there's all these cartoons about this, you know, where the, you see the little whatever figure, cartoon figure, yeah. like the red growing and they're about yeah. to blow. And then the smoke comes yes. out of their ears, yes. you know, Tom and Jerry, yeah. like that's yep. that happens there. Um, so that's real. Like that's physically real to where, yeah. um, you are, you, you hold things in because you can't do all you do and not get wronged on a regular basis. And I'm not saying we're not, you're not wronging someone too. I'm not saying you're perfect. Right. I'm just saying you don't carry all the things you carry without frustration and without right. little Correct. things kind of adding up. Yep. And then we don't have the kids we have, you know, the mm -hmm. ages they are without like them pushing our buttons too. So there's a little bit of like, okay, we can, we can take so much. And then there's a point where you lose it. Now, here's what I would say about you. And I'm going to uh -huh. tell everybody, this is how it works. So all of us have a river of, and, and it's basically our regulation that we can stay away from the banks of our river. One bank being fight, one bank being flight. Okay. So okay. all of us have this river and sometimes the river gets really narrow. And that is because there's stress in our lives and circumstances out of our control. And possibly trauma, possibly we've been hurt. And so our, our river gets really narrow to where we're going to hit a side pretty easily. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is me. I canoe, we canoe, we have canoes, we own them. Um, it's, I'm terrible. I'm literally the worst canoeer, especially for someone that owns a canoe. <laughs> I am the worst canoeer that has ever lived. My husband can't even believe how bad I am. He is like, this isn't that hard. Like why? I was just going to ask, how are why you is a it bad hard? canoeer? Because I literally zigzagged the whole way down the river. Oh. I don't know why I can't go straight. I know someone out there right now is like, you need some kind of paddle stroke that you know the name of. Good for you. They've tried. People have like sat there and coached me. I'm still not able to do this. Okay. So I'm hitting the bank the whole time. And that's, you know, I want you to picture that being your regulation that you have mm -hmm. the capacity to blow or you have the capacity to run and hide and shut down. Yep. And that's what we all do with stress. But our depending on how wide our river is, how much we can handle. So someone that has been through a ton of trauma when they were younger, it is not their fault. They lose their temper all the time. Now, what they're always, our behavior is in our control, right? We mm -hmm. always, I'm not ever excusing behavior, but I am saying their river probably is very narrow. Mm -hmm. So what makes them explode will feel very small compared to what might, may, might make you explode or someone that doesn't have a lot of trauma. And you've told me, um, and I know you've probably told everybody that you have a really healthy family and like you, mm -hmm. I'm not saying you grew up perfect because you definitely had stress in your life and lots of things, but that means probably from a young age, your river was pretty wide. So you don't get yeah. angry. You don't blow very often. Yeah. But everyone has the banks that they hit. Yeah. And it just depends on how much stress and, and circumstances can you know, mm -hmm. get you there. But, mm -hmm. but fight or flight are the typical responses. Are you fight or flight? I say this like with shame. I'm like, I'm a flight person. I real I, I I feel like being a fighter is like tougher and more <laughs> alpha and I want yeah. that answer. But the reality is when I started going to therapy and even just talking out things with my family, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm I I just run. Um, I internalize a lot. I do work through it. Yeah. I don't like to bury it. I hate that. It's right. probably one of the worst things for me, especially in friendship, when yes. someone doesn't want to talk about it and they want right. to just push it under the rug. That actually <laughs> can make me uh, upset and angry. So I'm very much like, let me have more control over it. Let me walk away. Yep. Let me figure out how to deal with this and handle it. And whether that's going to scripture or just. Mm -hmm talking to a friend or thinking it over in my mind. And then I want to work it out. Yeah. But I'm, a, you know, in faced in very hot situations, I definitely will take the back seat and I, yeah. I fly. But it sounds like you still come back around and you oh, want to deal yeah. with it. So what does that look like? Cause I think that's the magic is 
if you can feel the feeling, not explode, but come back Mm -hmm. around and still deal with it. Because what happens when you don't ever deal with it is it will come out sideways, right? These are the people that become unlikable because they, they just store it up and they store it up and then it comes out in little pieces towards everyone. Mm -hmm. And so I would say if you're someone that, that, you know, I think a really healthy question to ask the people that you love, that Mm -hmm. you live with, your parents, your, your kids, your spouse, your friends, um, your roommates, whoever you ask, just say, how would you say, um, I am emotionally, would you say I'm healthy or not? Like get them, get them telling you, cause you will be shocked at how much people notice that you're storing up things, even mm. if you feel like you're in control of them. Does that make sense? Yeah. So have you asked your friends and family that? What yeah. were some of the surprising answers? Uh-huh. So yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Just turn it back on me. That was good. Um, I, I do. And I mean, my kids are blunt. They are so honest and they will say exactly what they think. And it's unbelievable how they'll pick up disappointment from me without me ever having said mm. it, especially that one. And I think they're really sensitive to that one. Mm. I think they notice um, yeah. when I'm disappointed, it makes them nuts. Like they cannot. And I'll be like, I, I am great. Like I am fine. And they, they can't, they know. Yeah, they know. And they want me to say it. I think people want to hear the truth. Like they want to know what you really think or feel. Yeah. Ma- makes Maybe. sense. <laughs> my, my kids have been really, they're very blunt too. And they've told me over time. <laughs> They imitate me or they, they did this a while ago, like imitate mom. And what they would do. Oh, no. <laughs> you have to visually see this. So sorry if you're not watching this on YouTube or access more, but. It would be like deep breath, <laughs> hands over the face, uh, and then a. No, that a is smile. Impressive. And I was like, they do wow. that. And I was like, wait, what? And they were like, mom, like that that's your face all the time when you get stressed that is so out. And I'm epic. Like, I do that. And they were like, uh, they were all howling, even my husband and like, yeah, yeah that's <laughs> you. Like it just, and I'm like, wow. Okay. Well, I had no idea. And I guess I, so the stress level, they pick up really easily, but I think that's, again, I'm trying to get control over that emotion. Sure. So sure. I'm not reactionary. So I didn't know it was that obvious. This is so cute. And I love, um, I love what I'm about to do, which is to give advice for something that I struggle with too. So this just everyone be aware, this is very much preaching the choir right here. But I feel like the best thing I've learned in this process of studying all this is to be super honest about whatever you were feeling Mm. when you breathed in. So for example, I'm very anxious one day typically would have walked in and been very frustrated with everyone because it's 4 30. We're all coming home from a long day. Dinner needs to be figured out. We've got a million little things to do that evening. Mm-hmm. And I remember just that tension I felt in my chest that just is uncomfortable, you know? Mm-hmm. And I describe it in the book as itchy. And so I, I get home and I, instead of going in, I sat there with it for a minute. I was like, okay, what am I feeling? Like, hey, I'm feeling anxious. Why am I feeling anxious? And it had nothing to do with that day. It actually had something to do with Zach and I, a conversation we'd had earlier, a few days earlier. And it was still there and it was kind of ringing in my head and it was about money and it was, and I just Mm. had to spend money that day. And so I think I'd felt like, and it's not like we were bankrupt or something, but there definitely was more tension on our finances because of some business situations. So I recognized that. I was like, okay, that's why I'm anxious. I was like, Lord, I don't know how to solve this right now, this problem, but I do know that I'm going to be okay. We're going to be okay. And I just trust you with it. And I walked in. Now I normally wouldn't have done everything I just said. I would have just felt anxious and I would have walked in and exactly what happened would have happened, which would be Cooper runs and finds me and is frustrated because something had bad had happened at school and he wanted to tell me all about it and was railing. Mm -hmm. And I would have felt more anxiety. Like it would have, you know what I'm saying? It would have just kept going up. Yep. And scaling up to where I would have been short. But instead, I was able to be like, I had a bad day too. Mm. This, is, this is what I'm feeling right now. This is what I'm worried about right now. And Zach came downstairs and he had just gotten off the phone with something. And he was like, he was exhaling. And instead of being short with each other, we hugged. 
Mm. And we all sat down at dinner and everybody kind of went around and said Mm -hmm. what was hard. And that was a revolutionary concept to me because I think that tension Mm -hmm. that we all feel Mm -hmm. every day that I got to lose it. (laughs) Yep. Is real. And to give it enough honor to go, you know, and to do it in a vulnerable way. Because really, we're not so mad at our kid. It's that I've had a bad day. He's had a bad day. He's short with me. Now I'm really short with him. Now I'm mad at him. But when you go to like the underlying situation, it's like, yeah. I'm, I'm upset by about a lot of things. And what emotions are meant to do is to connect us, the, mm-hmm. the people we love. So when we say, you're right. When I'm doing that, I'm feeling something. I want y'all to ask me what I'm feeling next time. Like mm. next time that I do that, I, I want that. you to say, what are you feeling right now, mom? Like, what are you, what are you feeling? As long as they're going to be nice about it, right? <laughs> Take the ick out of chicken in 2024 with Good Ranchers. During their New Year promotion, you can get free chicken for a year. Instead of buying low-quality meat for high prices, you can stock up on high-quality cuts and save hundreds. Subscribe to any box and they'll add over two pounds of pre-trimmed, better-than-organic chicken breast to your order for free. This chicken is different from the chicken you know. It comes from a no-antibiotics-ever program, which means it has never been given antibiotics, hormones, or vaccines for its entire life. And that's why their chicken has over 2,000 five-star reviews. Simply go to goodranchers.com, pick your box, use my code CANDY, and enjoy $189 of free chicken in 2024, plus $20 off your first order. Stock your fridge with easy-to-prepare, clean, delicious meat all year long. Not sure which box to choose? Try their brand new weekly essentials box full of pre-trimmed beef and chicken that helps you meal prep so you can save time without sacrificing flavor. Start your year off right with meat you can trust. Make sure to subscribe today and use my code CANDY to claim over $200 in juicy, tender chicken and New Year's savings. GoodRanchers.com, American meat delivered. I'm thinking, you know, because... (laughs) My my son, Max, my youngest, well, has probably gotten the brunt of my anger wh- on the days that I have felt angry. He's probably gotten it the most because truthfully, and Max, you know you that he loves, I'm talking about him. He, <laughs> sorry, that sounded weird. Like, I'm okay to talk about my kids. Max has kind of gotten the brunt of my, ang- of my anger because truthfully, like Max can frustrate me the most. Yeah. And sometimes he thinks it's really funny, which sometimes makes me laugh. And then sometimes it just makes me more angry. And, um, but if there were ever, if there was ever a moment in like, my, you know, when I'm just had it up to here with him, if he had ever stopped and be like, mom, why are you really angry? Right. I mean, it, that would have been amazing because it probably would have actually changed the whole dynamic of why I was angry. Yeah. And even if it was directed at him, it could have been like, I'm angry because. Yeah. Or if I can stop. So if your kid doesn't ask you that, doesn't have the force to ask you we that. We would all have to which, ask our kids to ask <laughs> right. us, right? And so none of us would get that. Are, they're probably not going to. But if we can stop in those moments and say, why am I really angry? And then have responded like, I'm frustrated because I don't feel heard. Yeah. I've repeated myself yeah. several times. And now I'm at the point where I'm angry because you haven't listen to me. Yeah. And that makes you feel, let's keep going. That makes you feel mad, angry, and sad. Like that makes you sad because you're their mom and you're like, I want you to hear me. Right. So what I tell my kids to do often is look for the most vulnerable point of connection. So Mm. rather than be angry, sadness Mm -hmm. is an easier way to connect. Anger is going to always pitch you against the person you're talking to. But ultimately, under that anger, lots of times is sadness. <laughs> I'm laughing because I just remembered I actually tell my kids that all the time <laughs> and they make <laughs> fun of me for it because they're like, Mom, are you feeling sad about this? That's adorable. Like, yes, yes, I am. I am because blah, 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 X, Y, Z. But that's cute <laughs> that they even know that like, and that they're tender enough to say it. I'm not saying yeah. they handle it perfectly and nobody ever will. Like you will never find the right humans 
to perfectly navigate your emotions. That's why counselors are in business, right? Mm -hmm. like a lot of people have to pay people because yep. it's hard, but we can use our words and be like, you know what? When I'm feeling this way, it's probably pretty legitimate. Like I don't get angry very often. Mm -hmm. My kids would look back and go, mom, no, you lost your mind. Like we've never seen. And it was always over the same thing. I was like, what was it? So I was like, that's so fascinating. It's always the same thing. What made you, what made me so mad it was laundry, laundry. Oh, and I would go up to their room. I remember we would, you know, wash clothes, fold them, take them up to their room. Yeah. And then all the clean clothes would somehow end up back the next week because yeah. that's frustrating. Oh, I would want to hurt someone and kill them. Like it was just, it was, <laughs> I couldn't understand. I'm like, this yeah. is you spoil rotten brats. Like, yep, I, yep. But that is true. Like there were just certain things that made me completely lose it. But yeah. at the end of the day, I'm like, that's, you're, you're hurting me. Like that's dishonoring. Now, sometimes you can say that and they're just going to keep doing it for sure. Right. Because I'm thinking about what about the, what about people that don't receive the constructive criticism well, especially people that are a little more hot blooded, they get, angry easily so then to point out like can you share your feelings with me like you know if you have a friend that so, you feel like you know yeah i mean everybody's on an emotional spectrum of mm -hmm. health and i mean this is this is gonna hurt some people but you probably need to know where you are on it like where are you yeah. on this emotional health yeah. journey all of us are working towards arriving hopefully or we're not paying any attention to it and that means you're probably not emotionally your IQ and your emotional health is probably not growing. Yeah. So if you can be aware of that and go, you know, I'm pretty emotionally healthy or I'm pretty, you know, unhealthy, then you can know how to deal with people. The problem is this, everybody listening right now mm -hmm. is willing to ask those questions. Most of you. Right. But other people are not. Right. And so I actually, you know, I made sure there were lots of different stories in this book because I thought a lot of men need to read this book because mm -hmm women are more traditionally, and again, this is not yep. every woman and every man, I'm not completely stereotyping it, but a lot of women, I would say, are more comfortable with emotions than men are. Yeah. And there's certainly exceptions on both sides. Me being one of them, <laughs> because <laughs> I wasn't as comfortable. But, you know, I knew like men needed to read this too, because sometimes you're up against like, you're willing to say, express how you're feeling, mm -hmm. and you're willing to work through it. And you want to know how they're feeling. But the other person has reciprocate. nothing but anger. Yeah. And that's just where it is. And I would say we can't force that, but we can continually be a safe place to say whenever you want to talk about what's really behind that, mm. I'm here. Mm -hmm. And because I, I actually remember when we were young married, it's like Zach would be so angry at me and I wouldn't feel like it was even fair or even about that thing. And I wish I'd had the maturity to say that. But later we would go to counseling together for years and we learned how to do this together mm. which is just to pause and go what are you really feeling what, what are you really angry about because mm -hmm. it wasn't always it, I was the trigger and I was an mm -hmm. easy target but it wasn't always the thing ben beneath the thing there's always something beneath the thing yeah and so to ask really good questions and to respond when someone shares with you with I feel sad rather mm -hmm. than I think that is the most helpful thing yeah, you can do great. for kids for marriage, for friendships, I feel sad with you rather than I think you should. I think mm -hmm. it's because I think mm -hmm. that's how, always how we answer. But just to start with, I feel. And it's fair to ask someone you're sharing with today, I don't really need to hear what you think. I just want to hear what this makes you feel. Right. You can ask that. Okay. I think it's good too, if someone's listening and maybe has a spouse that isn't as open to sharing their feelings. Yeah. I loved that you can help someone in the most subtle of ways to maybe be more open to sharing their feelings simply by sharing yours. Because Absolutely. I know, especially when someone who doesn't want to share their feelings, they'll keep saying, don't ask me that. Now you've, now you've pissed me <laughs> off. Like Now you've made me angry because I don't want to be asked what my feelings are. My feelings are irrelevant. It doesn't matter. Yes. Here's what we need to do here. You know, so... For someone that maybe is living with someone like yes. that, just being open to sharing your own feelings yeah. to say, I feel stressed for you. Is yes. there something I can help you with today? 
Um, You know, that might be a a very easy intro. So you're not putting them on the spot, Mm. but you're kind of opening the door to how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe down the road, it will help them understand if you get into a pattern of being able to share your feelings more freely, whether it's I'm so happy today or I'm feeling very frustrated today. I'm really sad about this. That constant conversation, that new dialogue in your life at home might help the others around you feel free to express their feelings more. Absolutely. And I just think we've got to all just have grace for each other because, again, we're talking about a really chaotic world and a lot of chaotic emotional health. Mm -hmm. Um, It is there's so many people right now diagnosed with anxiety, depression, and that's the people diagnosed. So we know that the numbers are even higher. So this is real. And sometimes it's just, it's, it's difficult to untangle. Yeah. (laughs) Right. It really is. Um, yeah. And I do believe too, there is a, there is a way to do this. One of the things I did in the book was to lay out a process of Mm -hmm. what to do when you feel an emotion, because that sounded dumb. And honestly, it wasn't in a ton of the books I read because I don't, I don't think everyone thinks this way, but I needed to know, like, what do I do when I feel mad? And And so I literally made it simple steps because I thought for the person that feels emotionally inept, like they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted them to have handles. And I think all of us need this too. Um, But it's it's really simple. It's to notice what you're feeling, Mm. to name what you're feeling, to feel what you're feeling, which takes just a minute, a little bit of time, to share what you're feeling with someone, assuming that it's not just a little hit you on the ankles wave that's a mood that's not going to go away. If it's something Mm -hmm. more, you know, It's going to reoccur in your life. You share it. And then to decide what to do with it, because we all have to make that decision too, or, or it just starts to overtake us. Yeah. That's great. I love those. I love little, is there a, do you call it something like a, is there a little handle or a, or no, they should all do that. We should have an acronym for it. (laughs) An acronym. That's the word I was looking for. We should have an acronym. Okay. So you guys listening, you can just write in when you're listening to this episode, write in the comments what are, well, the acronym or if there's like another, (laughs) make up something Rename it. I'll I'll rewrite the book. Um, Has there ever been a time when your anger makes you draw closer to God? Hmm. Yes, there has been. That's such a good question. Um, When I have seen injustice that I know breaks his heart, Mm. I feel like sometimes I feel mad, like you should fix this. Mm -hmm. But I do feel like a lot of times I feel compassion Mm -hmm. because of how much he must be frustrated. Mm. You know what I mean? It it almost just makes me grateful that he is long suffering. Mm hmm. Cause I probably would smite the whole world mm-hmm. <laughs> by now. Um, but he is so patient. And yeah. I think that that has drawn me close to God just to realize and given me the ability to forgive and to let go of some of my anger. Cause I'm thinking if I feel wrong and I am such a person who does wrong, then he doesn't do wrong. And he's constantly being wrong. That, that means I can forgive yeah. because he's forgiven me. Yeah. So yeah. What about you? Um, I mean, the go-to area for me in my life when I get, I mean, I get really angry and on a public level when people write things that are untruthful right. about me or my family. I mean, and there's especially that, that right? especially that you write right. things about imagine. my kids yeah. that aren't true. And it, yeah. it really upsets me, but you know, that, uh, that causes me to draw closer to God because I realize If I go back on there and I just start spouting off in the comments or I write or I try to fight it, it's not going to do anything. It gets worse. It just gets worse. (laughs) So that's when I'm like, it's completely out of my control. So hard. And the only thing I can do is draw closer to God. Mm. And I have to realize that God's got this. Yeah. Um, And he can fight my battles for me. Yeah. And it might not look the way that I want it to. I might want an immediate... Um, uh, you know, an immediate response that m- makes me feel like justice has been served mm-hmm. or I've been justified, whatever the situation is. And I don't always get that, yeah. but I just have to continually go back to him and realize like, you've got this God, <laughs> you see everything, you know, everything, yeah. and you'll, you're going to fight my battles for me. 
that is so hard. I'm just sorry that that is part of this life for you because it really is. It it's makes me mad ev- watching. I feel ever. like it's part of everyone's life, though. Truly, it is. You're on social media. Right. Everyone deals with yep. it. And it yep. doesn't matter how many followers you have. I know. <laughs> People just have crazy courage behind a keyboard. Right. To be really mean. It's, yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. yeah. So I think we should take our listener question. Oh, wait, let me ask this question because we did talk about some ways in dealing with our anger. However, do you have any additional just go-to strategies or steps in the immediate when anger arises Mm -hmm. in the practical? What do you do? Yeah. So I'm going to give you what I often give my kids because that this is, this is the work Mm -hmm. we're always doing is of course, to take a few deep breaths Mm -hmm. and to take some space. And I think when you feel a lot of times anger and anxiety are very closely connected, especially when you feel like you're about to lose it. When you Mm -hmm. told the story about your husband at the airport, his heart was racing, your heart was racing. Anxiety and anger can play together. They're very close cousins. And so when you treat anxiety for anyone, you're supposed to get into your body. So imagine that, um, you know, for for my young kids, I put my hands on their shoulders. And I help them feel grounded and calm. Mm -hmm. Um, The older my son gets, the less he'll let me do that. So he goes and takes a shower and he turns on music, but something that's physical. So take a walk, get in a shower, um, do some, hug someone. I know that sounds Mm. crazy, but it does help um, Mm. regulate your body. Mm. So you've got to think of it. The word regulation is a therapeutic word, but it sure does apply. And we sure use it a lot in our household is yeah. when you feel dysregulated. And my s- sweet 15 year old will say like, mom, I'm just not feeling very regulated right now. It's best mm. we not talk about it. And I'm sitting there going, man, you are more emotionally mature than we are. <laughs> like right. when I get going, I'm like, let's talk about Don't it right now. Love that? And I respect it, but yeah. he's really had to learn. My river is, is narrow. Yeah. I hit the banks fast. Can you give me a minute? Yeah. And I think taking that minute and doing something physical that, that can calm you down, it, 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 it genuinely helps. Our yeah. nervous system I know Anita, Dr. Anita Phillips was here and, and she talks a lot about the nervous system. Um, it's so brilliant and true that our nervous system runs all through our bodies mm-hmm. and, and it can be dysregulated. And so what does it look like to, to calm your nervous system? And it's usually going to be something physical. You yelling, yeah. I mean, I love that you told that story. <laughs> I isn't do. the worst thing in the world. It's, it's, a, it's physical. You know, it's like you want to fight. You want it. Yeah. Have contact. Um, That's my extreme. On my daily sure. basis, I'm deep breaths deep are breaths. the first thing. Yep. The bath is a good thing. I mean, if you a have bath, a bath. Walking yep. away, I go for walks. Yes. That's why I, I love to walk every day anyway, but they're mm-hmm. so helpful. And my other thing for me is I love getting in my car and driving. I yeah. like to be alone. I can process my thoughts. I don't mm-hmm. necessarily have somewhere to go. And that's okay. And it's the one time I don't care about LA traffic. Yeah. I'm like, I can sit in it all day. I just want a space where I'm by myself and it's me and God. And I talk out loud. Yep. Me and too. people think I'm crazy. Nope. Or, I love it. Or I'm talking to my cell phone. I don't know what they think, but um, but it doesn't matter. I just talk out loud in my car and I feel safe and that's my God time. Yeah. To work it out. I love it. And I think bring that to God, right? Like we've got to end here. We get in here with every emotion. God wants that. Like God wants you in your car yelling about what's going on. I want that for my kid. Not every day, but, but a lot of times, like it means a lot to me that he wants to tell me like, this is what happened today. Yeah. And I think that is the greatest place to go. Yeah. With it. Okay. Let's take our listener question. This is from Natalie. She said, I heard the season is about emotions. And the first thing that pops up in my mind was how can I deal with mom rage? I read my Bible and get advice from other moms, but I still struggle a lot. Sending you lots of love from Germany. Wow. Wow. Thank you for listening all the way from Germany. I actually looked up mom rage because I wanted to make sure that I had the right context for what mom rage is. And it's explosive anger in parenting when you feel like you're about to snap. (laughs) Never felt that. (laughs) I'm like, okay, we all have mom rage. Um, I think one of the the biggest tools for me was in those moments of getting really angry at my kids. I think the biggest reason is always not feeling heard. Yeah. 
because they didn't listen to me. And then it's like, I've already told you twice. I've told you three times. I'm going to count to three if you don't right. do this by this and this. Yeah. And I think I probably read a parenting book. Who knows which one? But I realized, why am I allowing myself to even get to the point with my kids of saying, I've told you three times? Yeah. It was like immediate, like, what was the, the phrase? Delayed obedience is no obedience. Right. So it's like, if I ask you to do something, some reasonable thing, I mean, we're not talking about crazy things here. If I've asked you, please go put your Which, shoes away. to some degree we can control till they become preteen. Yeah, I know. It all goes out the door. I guess I'm thinking in toddler stage right now. In toddler but stage, that, yes. It's like, but expect it, but a it lot. really helped yeah. to then implement yeah. the consequences. Well, that right. still happened in, in, right. in teenage years because Discipline when it was start. like, yep. if, That's good. if you don't, if I've asked you to do this, this is not done. Here's the consequence. And implementing that on the first time. Right. Where you're that, not, you don't have to get game. mad. You're, they're exactly. hitting a brick wall and the brick wall is yeah, the consequence. I'm like, why am yeah, I, I agree getting angry? That. You're the one that made a bad choice. Right. You should be getting yeah. angry. So all I have to do is implement the consequence. Oh, you're going to go sit in your room for an hour. You're going to write an apology letter. You're going to, whatever that is. Yeah. And then I'm not the one having the, the rage over it or yeah. the anger. Yeah, that's so good. And that's so practical for parenting. And really helpful because you're right. Then we're not the bad guys either. It's like, well, this is what we all agreed to. This yeah. is the consequence. Yeah. Sorry. Like this is where we are. Um, the other thing I would say is just make sure you have some self-care mm -hmm. because dealing with toddlers or mm -hmm. really any age all day, every day can make you anybody a little crazy. So just be sure totally. you get some time. And I remember yeah. when my, those years for me, um, I was not working in those years. And when my kids were toddlers, and I would get a babysitter every Wednesday and I would just go to Barnes and Noble or to a coffee shop or to a bookstore. And I would just read and be alone by myself mm -hmm. all day. And I didn't, we didn't have any money. I mean, that was a big sacrifice, but that helped me get through. And it kind of felt like a non-negotiable. So what is the space and the margin to, for you to exhale? Because of course, toddlers are making you crazy. Of course they are. <laughs> and there is a little- right season a little bit of time that we all need margin just to yeah to decompress from that yeah our job well natalie we hope that helped <laughs> life really can be a roller coaster so jenny and i made something special for you it's a simple one-page guide to being emotionally healthy people you can find that at the link candace.com and we'll also put it in our show notes until next time be grateful all day every day Hey there, I'm so glad you're here. If there was anything you just watched that was encouraging, hit the like button and let me know and comment below what you liked about the conversation. Candy Rock Entertainment, all rights reserved.